Welcome back. Today we have this 2015 Jeep Wrangler and I had some type of misfire concern. They had the codes right up the street somewhere. It's the weekend, so I'm gonna try to help them out as quick as I can. Um, like I said, don't know much at this point. They, they said it was some type of injector fault code, so on cylinder six. So let's see what we can see on the scan tool and uh, get some direction and go from there. Okay, so. Looks like we got some codes in a couple modules. Thinking, thinking. Oh. Okay, so thermostat, DTC, fill injector, circuit open, and under six misfire so you know I will mention this this engine she said that the gauge wasn't hot but when she pulled up it was hot you know I popped this hood and everything under the hood was hot it was just really you know just too hot to touch um, so let's see here that, just something to note and got a central gateway code, but I think that's going to be unrelated. Lost communication with radio. We are not concerned about that. Like I said, she's from out of town. She just wants to get home. All right, so let's pull up some injector diagrams real quick. Spill control system. Injector control number six. Yep, so that uh, brown violet wire is going to be our number six control wire and I just had to verify it's just I mean you can tell I'll show you over there on the engine but typically you know you're gonna look for like you know I think the other one was like brown white or something and all of them for all the injectors were the ground or power supply was brown white typically the control wire is gonna be the odd color so you'll all the injectors will have a different color if that makes sense there's two different splices here so injectors one three and five are going to be spliced into each other for the uh, 12 volt supply and then two four and six as well so when you're back probing uh you know to, to figure out if, if the injector is working keep that in mind Injector under the intake. Uh, way back there. There's no way that I'm going to get in there uh, with the leads. There's just no way. Yeah. So, this is the ECM right here. So, we're just going to back probe at the ECM. This engine was just replaced. Uh, I don't know. I guess just a few months ago. I, uh, just doing a quick visual just to make sure, you know, first off, there's a bunch of loose hold downs in the back. There's, uh, you know, right where this harness goes. There's, and this, this, I believe this is the, uh, injector harness or part of it. I think that comes from the, the rear of the engine there. It goes into, into the, uh, injectors. And I guess this splice right here is known to have issues, but I mean, I'm just doing a quick visual just to see if I can see anything out of the ordinary. You never want to see, 
you know, like right here, this these wires are rubbing up against this pipe there. Um, what is that? It's a, a coolant heater core hose, I guess. Uh, I mean, I don't see anything right off the bat. I just got two channels set up. Channel one is just going to be the primary for the uh, injector control and I have a 10 to 1 attenuator on there. Channel 2, I just got that low amp clamp for the 12 volt power supply to all the injectors. So if there's anything wrong with, you know, the power supply circuit, I should see it on there. <clears throat> It'll also give us some more insight on too, you know, whether or not that injector is opening. And then over here, I just have this ground bus bar. It's just a real simple, easy way to uh, keep all the leads out of the way. I don't have a million, uh, you know, ground clamps all over the place. Okay, so I'm recording. I'm going to go start up the Jeep and let's see what we can see. Definitely feel it shaking, so try to get a full screen there if I can. So there's our current ramp for bank one, and there's no control coming from that ECM. Or you know, or that injector is just not operating. Alright, now I'm gonna move that uh, primary circuit to an operating coil or injector okay there we go so and there we got an operating injector so we need to figure out why exactly we're not getting many power to that injector or what exactly is going on with it um, and you know like I said before Unfortunately, it's under the intake. So you can see right there, zoomed in just a little bit. Uh, you know. Okay, so I'm just playing back that capture we just got. Uh, I'm going to count between the current ramps. So we've got one, two, three. Okay, so we need to find pin 80 at that ECM connector C1, I believe, or... Sorry, connector C2 and pin 80. Okay, so you can see I've got it back probed on pin 80. It's a brown violet wire, just like the one over there. There's no control coming from that ECM, so... And my, mind you, that injector is under this intake, so I'd rather not take it out if I don't have to. And we got nothing. So that's the, uh, the control for this good cylinder. Over here on this harness, um, that was right there. So now I just took the lead out for the the scope so we're getting like 13.6 volts there now I put it I'm gonna probe it into that the bad one with no control we're getting nothing and I'm, I just did this over at the ECM I'm getting the same reading I'm going to take note of all the different uh, color codes for these wires that go to each individual injector. And we're gonna ohm test all of them from the ECM connector. So we're just gonna go one at a time and this is how I'm gonna verify if there's more than one shorted injector or possibly a harness issue. That cylinder number five injector from the ECM to that connector. Now, cylinder 
one should be on that same wire, and that is a brown yellow wire at pin eight. Ugh. Oh, I hate this stuff. Okay. Oh, and I almost just shanked myself in the eye with that. Great. Brown, yellow. Oh. Okay, I see it right in front of me. So, that first one, uh, cylinder five, it had uh, 14 ohms. Should be on the same ground or the same power supply. There we go. 14.4 ohms. Okay, now on to uh, three. So that should be a brown light blue at pin 10. Okay. Oh, it's hiding. I'm gonna say that that's pin nine. You want to be super careful when you're doing this. If you, if, especially if there was power on this circuit, be very careful back probing an ECM. We got 14.1 ohms on that. Cylinder three. Okay, now, now we need to go over there and I'm just gonna switch my probe on the other side to the other feed. So now this one, uh, we're doing the other bank. This is the bad bank. We should expect to see some discrepancies on this side due to the code we're getting. So, uh, and the symptoms, obviously. <laughs> so, all right. Pin two is uh, dark blue wire at pin nine. Sorry, it's a brown dark blue. And we should expect to see just about the same reading as right over there. And okay. Maybe not in there very good. This wire is at kind of an odd angle. There we go. 14.4 ohms. I 
just writing all this down because I'll never remember. I mean, good is good if you're if you're in the in the ballpark, but I'm just I'm just taking notes. So uh, okay, where does that leave us? See, that's why. <laughs> so I don't forget which one. So now we are looking for pin 11, and it's a brown tan wire for cylinder four. And 14.4 ohms. Okay, uh, that just leaves our bad cylinder. So, cylinder six. That's our brown violet wire. It's gonna be on over here, I believe. By the way, a special shout out to Joe Kachi over at Joe's Auto Electric. He just sent me these uh, leads for my meter. They're really long, so uh, that's nice. Super convenient and uh, also just super nice of him to send those over. And we got Infinity OL. So let me just make sure I'm in there. Yeah, so I think you guys can see that. So we got a bad injector or that wire going to that injector is no good. And we just verified that. I think we have that pretty much verified and we're gonna pop that manifold off, get a new injector in there and call it good. So there you guys have it, injector testing. You know, I just wanna note that this is where the scope shines every time. There's uh, other methods for testing injectors, of course, and they all work. Um, some take longer than others. You know, like in this case, you may have to take the manifold off just to test the injector, which that's not really cost effective or, or time effective. So, you know, this is why learning how to use a scope is just so important. You know, I can't stress that enough. If you're watching this and you're thinking, you know, oh, should I get a scope or I don't know how to use it or, well, that's how I was a few months ago and I'm no expert, but I will tell you that it has saved me a phenomenal amount you know, of time. You can spend all day testing something like this, taking the manifold off, whatever you know, run into other problems along the way, accidentally break something, uh, you know, easy. Uh, you know, being able to current ramp every single injector and watch them, you know, in live action, uh, you know, be able to take that other probe from wire to wire and watch them operate, you know, the current ramp, you know, watching them open, the voltage, watching them close, quick. Uh, you know, if you can become efficient at this stuff, you can, you can make a killing in this industry. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.